this is Carrie with Canary Quilts and this is the fourth installment of the 11th 7th the 11th Simple What Nots Club um, featuring Kim Deal's Right as Rain fabrics and this pattern is called Hayride. So this pattern isn't too hard to put together it's really the same block over and over. The only difference is is right here is a block and you've got two separate chocolate blocks which you have to keep separate here. So you have eight of the dark chocolate and eight of the milk chocolate I guess is if you want to call it that. And then you alternate them as you're going around. So it turned out super cute. It's really small which is great because you get it done really fast. So if you're interested in the Simple Whatnots Club um, at Fat Quarter Shop I don't know if it's still open, but you can check. I have a link down below. If you like the fabrics, I have a link to the fabrics also, because the fabrics are gorgeous. So you can subscribe to my channel and get notified every time I put out a new video, because I have four more of these to do, and I'm doing other things like a US state block journey. I have other quilt alongs, and I, have, I open my mail and what's the box videos. But anyway, let's get started on this little mini quilt. So month four, of the 11 Simple Whatnots Club is called Hayride. And you can see it's 16 and a half by 16 and a half inches square. So it's going to be a small quilt. Um, <clears throat> they list all the fabrics you're getting here. So these are the 10 inch by 10 inch fabrics. These are the 10 by 21 inch fabrics. This is the uh, binding and this is the backing. So those are the fabrics we've got. They list them out by number in case you need to get some more of them. I also have a link to all these fabrics below um, if you're interested in them and you like them for another project. And so there they are by color. So if they reference them in the pattern, you know which one they're talking about. But we're going to get set for cutting. And... Um, so I'm going to just get these cut. Uh, it's pretty much rectangles. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue. If there is a big issue, I will come back and let you know. Okay, there's my cuts for the Hayride mini quilt. And there really wasn't anything significant about cutting these. Um, there should be 195 of these cream squares. 39 of each color and there should be 66 of these assorted color squares and then there should be uh, 64 of the chocolate squares divided between the two colors here and then I've got my binding so I'm going to set my binding aside over here with my backing and we're going to build whirly Word, whirly gig A so Whirly Gig A consists of the center, like pinwheel, being this color. So I'm going to set this aside. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm going to do one, and then we're going to have to do 31 more beyond that. So we need to mark a diagonal on for one of these. I need to mark a diagonal on the back of two cream squares and I'm just randomly pulling them off. And then we're going to take one of these chocolate triangles and we're going to lay it down so that it goes from the corner to the center. We'll clip that on. We are going to sew this right along that line right there. There's my seam. I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off from the seam. So I'm laying my quarter inch mark on the seam and then when I trim I'll have a quarter of an inch left. Let's get these strings off of there. And then I'm going to iron it like that. Let's get this ironed, set that seam. So this is going to be a little bit different than the flying piece we've been doing in a lot of these. 
So I'm going to take my second cream colored square and I'm going to lay it so that this sewing line is parallel to that line. I'm going to sew along that line. I'm going to trim it just like the other one. Quarter of an inch away from the seam and iron it towards the cream color. So we'll end up with 31 units that look just like this. And that's how you do it. So I'm going to finish up those other 31 and then we'll get started on the next section of the Whirly Gig A block. So here's my pile of 32 of the chocolate um, rectangles that we made. The next thing we're going to do is work with the colors here. And I've separated my piles into 32 of each. So this is going to be Whirly Gig B. This is going to be Whirly Gig A. And this one's a little bit simpler than the last one. Take a square, a cream square. Draw a line from uh, diagonally. Take one of your color rectangles, put it on like that. We will pin it. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew on this line, trim a quarter of inch from the seam, and then iron the cream over. And that's all we have to do on each one of these, it's just one side. So there's one of them. I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to iron it. Iron towards the cream color. And so we're going to make 31 more of these exactly like that. My 32 units done here. The colors with the left side with the um, cream color triangle here. So what we need to do now is on all 32 of these we need to put them together just like that with the color on the top and the chocolate on the bottom. So line it up, edge to edge, match it. So a quarter of an inch and sew towards the chalk or so iron towards the chocolate piece. There's my piece. Let's set our seam and then iron towards the chocolate. So we've got 32 of those to do. So there's one, the rest of them will be just like that. So there's all 32 of my units that I've now put together. So what we need to do is lay the block out and we want to turn it like we're making a pinwheel. I'm just grabbing random and you always want this piece to be on the outside so that's how your blocks are going to go together so what we need to do is sew our rows together and we will match ends and edges and pin, match ends and edges, and pin, and sew a quarter of an inch. So I've got these sewn a quarter of an inch, and what we want to do is iron our seams in opposite directions. So I'm going to put this seam going to the left and then the seam I'm going to go to my right so 
So I'll get these ironed in the opposite direction. So now we can put this together just like this and the center seams will nest. Will give us a nice pretty center and then we'll sew this at a quarter of an inch and that is that seam is going to be uh, ironed open so we'll set it and then we will iron it open there now we have eight of these to make so that's how you make Whirly Gig A, and I've made one, and now I need to go and make seven more. There we go. There is all eight of our Whirly Gig A blocks. And what makes it Whirly Gig A is the color that's in the pinwheel in the middle. So not too hard to put together, just a lot of the same kind of sewing. And now that we're going to do Whirly Gig B, it's exactly the same sewing. So exactly how you made these blocks, you're going to make eight Whirly Gig B blocks, but this is going to be the center chocolate color instead of this. So it's all going to be the same. We're going to use all the same pieces, do the same um, sewing. So I'm not going to show you how to do that because I just showed you how to do A and B is exactly the same. So when I come back, I'll have all my B's done. So here's my Whirly Gig A blocks. I've got eight of them and my Whirly Gig B blocks. And I've got eight of them. And the difference between these two is this center pinwheel fabric. This is the lighter chocolate. This is the dark, darker chocolate. So we want to... We're going to need four rows in our little quilt and two of them are going to be made where we start with whirly gig A and then B and then A and then B. So that's how we need two of our rows to be done. So we've got these two rows where we've got A, B, A, B. And then we're going to have two rows where we go B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. Now this is not how our quilt's going to be laid out. This is just how the four rows right now are going to be put together. Another thing I want to note that they don't tell you in the pattern either is make sure that the seams that you ironed open are going basically north and south here. That means that these seams will be ironed to either side and we'll be able to nest these seams together. So go through all your rows, make sure the seam that is ironed open is going north and south and then all these seams right here will be ironed in the opposite direction and we will be able to nest them together okay so they don't tell you how to press these but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my first two rows where I start with whirly gig a, whirly gig a I'm going to press those to the left and then the two rows where I start with whirly gig B I'm going to press to the right because we're going to eventually be alternating these rows in. So we'll have one of these rows on top, and then this row will be second, third, and fourth. And that way we should have nested seams. Now they don't say that in the pattern, but if I've got my thinking correct, we should be able to have alternating seams in each row and be able to nest them. So I'm going to get my rows sewn together, and like I said, the rows that start with Whirly Gig A, I'm going to press to the left. The ones that start with B, I'm going to press to the right. So when I get these done, we'll come back and we'll assemble our rows. 
Okay, so I've got my Whirly Gig A rows up here. All blocks ironed this way. My Whirly Gig B rows down here, all blocks ironed this way. And remember the difference is, is which chocolate you started with. This is the lighter chocolate in these two rows to start with, darker chocolate in these two rows to start with. So we just need to alternate these rows when we're putting them together. So if I just move those two in the middle, then we've got light chocolate, dark chocolate, light chocolate, dark chocolate. And it's like that throughout all these rows. So now we just put the rows together and because we alternated the seams, all these seams right here will nest together. So I'm going to get all my rows sewn together and come back and have a little quilt out. There it is. So I just ironed, when I put my rows together, I just ironed them in one direction. Um, so it turned out really neat. It looks so different through the camera. It looks like these blocks are chopped off, but they actually aren't. Looks like these are full blocks, but that's not how it is. Yeah, it looks like that's a full block, but it's actually, this is the full block. So it looks really different than the camera. I really like that. It looks really nice. Points look good. So the next thing we got to do is uh, sandwich it with some batting and our backing and get it quilted. Ta-da! There it is all done. I went ahead and just sandwiched it and I just did a great big meander around. I don't know if you can see it in there, but yeah, it's just got a great big meander. Pulled it together because I think the pattern is what is really the part that I want to stand out. And then I bound it and it turned out really cool. And you can see how small it is. It's not very big. So I'm looking forward to hanging this up. So we should be getting month five soon and if you've enjoyed watching me put these together and you're putting them together also you can subscribe below to my channel and get notified every time i put out a new video thank you very much for watching this video